talk to us about what is insulin resistance and what is the main culprit in causing insulin resistance? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, there's some basic tenets here. Uh, we in these homo sapien hominid bodies are plant-eating hominids. Uh, we have basically the same digestive system and metabolic mechanisms as our gorilla and bonobo cousins have. And, and they're up in the trees eating leaves and fruit all day. They eat a high-carbohydrate, high-fiber, low-fat diet. And they do not develop type 2 diabetes. They don't develop clogged arteries. They don't develop obesity. They stay lean, healthy people. And their insulin function stays absolutely normal uh, throughout their lives. They've never had a gorilla in the office with uh, insulin resistance and, uh, and uh, taking metformin. Uh, but seriously, uh, that's kind of as fun, funny as it sounds to make a gorilla the gold standard. In a way, metabolically, it is for, for us plant-eating hominids. We have, I mean, really, we've got fingers on our hands, not claws. We've got small mouths with flat grinding molar teeth and a rotary jaw joint for chewing up starchy roots and fruits. We're, we're a plant-eating hominid. And as such, our body, from our digestive system to our cellular uh, uh, metabolism mechanism, our mitochondria, etc., they are used to a steady stream of easily digestible, metabolizable carbohydrates, sugars. Um, those leaves and fruits are made up of uh, glucose, maltose, fructose, uh, and, and starchy uh, uh, substances that are, again, long chains of sugar. And our body is beautifully adapted to metabolize these sugars. Uh, uh, we eat the apple and, uh, and, and the sugar gets into our bloodstream. We have to move the sugar into our cells thanks to the action of insulin, which we'll talk about. But then the glucose, the sugar, gets uh, metabolized by our mitochondria. The energy, the chemical energy stored in that glucose ring gets, gets, gets stored in, in the form of uh, ATP molecules. And the waste products are elegantly non-burdensome. What do I mean? They're just uh, the, when you uh, metabolize the sugar, you wind up with carbon dioxide that you breathe out and water that you excrete through your urine. It's a clean burning fuel and it yields plenty of energy, uh, doesn't burden the body and gorillas stay uh, nice and healthy with uh, clean, uh, clean arteries, etc. cetera. Um, so it's a validation that we're, we're, we should be living on natural sugars. Now, when one changes to a diet high in fats, and, and it's, it's so unnatural, literally, in the natural world, their fats are pretty rare. Um, in, in the uh, outside of the true carnivores that will pounce on an antelope and eat their liver, etc. Et Out in nature, uh, unless you're living under an avocado tree or coconut tree, you don't see many fats. Uh, the, the, the natural world, the plant world, is, is basically a high carbohydrate world. And we are uh, well designed to use that as our fuel. Well, a little bit of fat, if you do come across the occasional avocado, fine. We need a little fats in our diet. And everything has a little bit. Rice has a little rice oil. Apples have a little apple oil. We, we get our fats from our food. But large quantities of fats. Um, uh, again, you know, th two avocados or worse yet, a cheeseburger um, and a, a hot dog and, and bacon fried in butter. They, you know, those kind of huge amounts of fats. Our body was never designed to handle that, that onslaught of, of, of fat like that. And what happens? Well, your blood turns fatty after about four, for a good four hours after you eat that, that cheeseburger and the milkshake. <clears throat> and it injures our arteries. It sets off <clears throat> inflammatory reactions throughout the body. And those are other lectures. But for our purposes, one thing those fats do is as the blood stays fatty hour after hour after that cheeseburger and the pizza and the bacon and eggs and the fried chicken, you know, it's a high fat diet we're eating. Um, after, as the weeks go by of fatty blood, months go by, years go by of keeping your blood fatty, that fat works its way into our cells, into our liver cells, into our muscle cells. You can see the fat under a microscope. If you have a stain for it, you'll see the fat that's building up in the muscle cells. Well, 
It's like putting, the, again, uh, machine oil in your gasoline tank. It's, the, it's, it's too thick. It's, it doesn't function properly. And, and that fat called intramyocellular lipid that builds up in the muscle cells, but it's happening in the liver too. Um, it starts interfering with essential enzymes needed for insulin to work. Let's go back to insulin. Um, you eat that apple, blood sugar goes up, the pancreas senses it, puts out this hormone, a little protein called insulin that uh, comes to your cells, plugs into an insulin receptors, and that sends messages. It sets off enzyme cascades through the cells to pull that sugar into the cell where it can be burned for energy. But if the cell is all full of fat, if that intramyocellular lipid is clogging up the mitochondria, uh, is generating free radicals, it's clogging up the insulin receptors from the inside, it's inhibiting kinase enzymes needed to make that, uh, uh, that transport mechanism pull the glucose in. Uh, is you put, you know, chewing gum in the door lock or super glue in the door lock, uh, chewing gum because it is reversible. Um, and, and at that point, insulin knocks on the door, but nobody answers. Um, the, uh, the, the enzyme machinery does not work. It's all gummed up with the, these fats. Uh, and as a result, the blood sugar piles up in the, uh, uh, piles up in the bloodstream and people walk around with these high sugars at 260 and 350, et cetera. And the admonition, uh, from everyone from, from your family to the diabetes educator to the, to the uneducated physician is, oh, so those sugars, those carbs are bad for, look how your sugar's going right up. Stop eating those carbs, raise your blood sugar. But the, but the, the sugar is the tail of the dog. That, that's just the, that's the last, that's the effect. The real problem is all that fat in the cells and the muscle cells and the, and the liver cells. And, uh, and that's the real driver of insulin resistance where the insulin, uh, plugs into insulin receptors, but does not allow glucose to be brought from the bloodstream into the, into the cells to be burned. So insulin resistance is a matter of too much fat, not too much sugar. Yes, if you're all clogged up, don't eat a bunch of sugar. That's true, but you got to really focus on your diet and where and look at the fat, including vegetable fats, where they're coming from and the mischief they might be causing.